It was the winter of 1929. Black Friday and the crash had sobered up a nation drunk on the Roaring Twenties. The past 10 years had been bootleg liquor, Model T's, stocks on reckless margin, rum runners, gangsters, and the Charleston. Now the era was over, and the future looked like hard times. But in the tiny coastal shipbuilding village of Essex, Massachusetts, there was still good work down at the basin. The gang at 80 Stories Riverbank Shipyard was busy building Gloucester Captain Ben Pine's newest racing schooner. The Gertrude L. Tebow was a showboat and a movie star from the start. She had the lines of a racing yacht, not a fishing vessel. Her owners and builders designed her from the keel up to win the International Fisherman's Cup, a challenge race spawned by a newspaper man in Halifax, Nova Scotia as a publicity stunt that generated fierce American and Canadian national pride. From 1920 until 1924, schooners from Gloucester and the Nova Scotian fishing port of Lunenburg fought bitter, cutthroat races, booming canvas and spars to the wind across treacherous open seas in fair and foul weather. The winning captain, vessel, and crew owned the coveted trophy cup and bragging rights as the best of the fleets working the fishing banks of the North Atlantic. Men like Ben Pine, Angus Walters, and other Cape Ann and Nova Scotian skippers became obsessed with winning and holding the Dennis Cup. Fleet owner Pine's Tebow was Gloucester's latest greatest hope to defeat Nova Scotia's perennial entrant, the mighty Blue Nose. On her launch day, the village school children were led out to join the crowds gathered to see her slip into the river. And she did win, but only once, in a 1930 race for the Lipton Cup, a dubious alternate prize offered by the British tea magnate, Sir Thomas Lipton. Defeated in 1931 for the Fisherman's Cup, Thibault stumbled into the teeth of the Great Depression. She was considered a failure as a working fisherman. She and her crew narrowly escaped disaster in a 1937 Arctic expedition. And the burdens of the worldwide depression and the Canadians' reluctance to race again ultimately cheated her and the Gloucestermen from winning back the cup. She lost the last race in a highly contested challenge race for the Dennis Cup in 1938. Shortly afterward, the Dennis Cup itself was lost or stolen. Days later, the cup surfaced at the New England home for little wanderers. Along with it, a verse was discovered that hinted that the people of Gloucester were sure with sufficient wind that Tebold would have defeated the Blue Nose. Here's to Angus, good old sport, whose challenge sort of takes us short. Send us a gale that blows like 30, and we'll bet our shirts on little Gertie. Her 1933 visit to Washington helped convince Franklin Roosevelt to fund construction of a modern new fishing pier on the Gloucester waterfront. She was a wildly popular floating ambassador at World's Fairs and exhibitions. She inspired countless newsreels, photographs, and paintings. And she made a handsome young deckhand, Sterling Hayden, a Hollywood star. During World War II, at the height of the fears of German attack on the Atlantic coast, the United States Coast Guard recognized her power to raise American wartime morale. With great fanfare, they named her the flagship of the Corsair fleet, drafted into service as coast watchers against the German U-boats and Atlantic raiders. Home front propaganda elevated her as a symbol of American resolve and a determination to press on against dangerous odds. 
When she finally sank in a storm at her moorings in Venezuela in 1948, she was a derelict Caribbean freighter. Her arch-rival Blue Nose had gone down off the shores of Haiti two years earlier. Maybe the Gertrude L. Thibault was just a showboat. A schooner under sail in an age of engine-powered draggers. But the fading beauty queen shined in her role. The American press and public had followed the Fisherman Cup races with keen interest and pride, and cheered her almost as they had cheered for the scrappy little racehorse Sea Biscuit. She was Gloucester's and America's story under sail, and in times of change and uncertainty, people often need strong symbols to raise their spirits. She was a throwback to the stirring days of the Great Bank sailing schooners, at a time that had already come and gone before her launch day. But for a struggling fishing port, Thibault certainly symbolized Gloucester's fame and glory, hard won at the cost of countless vessels and lives since the 1620s. The Gertrude L. Thibault may have lost her chances at the Cup, but she won the enduring legacy that was Captain Ben Pine's true quest. Forever in the eyes of the world, the men of Gloucester were now the fisher kings of the North Atlantic.